the space that you kind of touched on that's full of theories and is perhaps detached from uh, appreciation of empirical evidence or longing for empirical evidence or grounding in empirical evidence is uh, the theoretical physics community and the interest in uh, unifying the laws of physics and uh, with the theory of everything. It's, I'm, I'm not sure with, from which direction to approach this question, but how far away are we from arriving at a theory of everything, do you think? And uh, how would we, how important is it to try to arrive at it, uh, at this kind of goal of this beautiful, simple theory that unlocks the, the very, you know, fundamental basis of our nature as we know it. And, um, you know, uh, and how, what are the kinds of approaches uh, we need to take to get there? Yeah, so in, in physics, the biggest challenge is to unify quantum mechanics with gravity. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, once we have experimental evidence for how this happens in nature, um, in systems that uh, have quantum mechanical effects, but also gravity is important, then the theory will fall into our lap, okay? But the wow. mistake that uh, is made by the community right now is to come up uh, with the right theory from scratch. Uh, and, you know, Einstein gave the illusion that you can just sit in your office and, and understand nature, you know, when he came up with his general theory of relativity. But, uh, you know, first of all, perhaps he was lucky, but uh, it's not a rule. Uh, the rule is that you need evidence to guide you, especially when dealing with quantum mechanics, which is really uh, uh, not intuitive. And... Um, so there are two places where uh, the two theories meet. Uh, one is black holes, and there is a puzzle there. It's called the information paradox. Um, in principle, you can throw the Encyclopedia Britannica into a black hole. It's a lot of information, uh, and then it will be gone because a black hole carries only three uh, properties or qualities, the mass, the charge, and the spin, mm -hmm. according to Einstein, but then, uh, when Hawking tried to bring in quantum mechanics to the game, he realized that black holes have a temperature and they radiate. This is called Hawking radiation. And it was sort of anticipated by uh, Jacob Bekenstein before him. And Hawking wanted to prove Bekenstein wrong and then figure this out. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, what it means is black holes eventually evaporate. And they evaporate into radiation that doesn't carry this information according to Hawking's calculation. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, according to quantum mechanics, information must be preserved. So where did the information go if uh, a black hole is gone? And where, where is the information that was encoded in the encyclopedia when mm -hmm. it went into the black hole? And to that question, we don't have an answer yet. It's one of those puzzles about black holes and it touches on the interplay between quantum mechanics and, and gravity. Another important question is what happened at the beginning of the universe? What happened before the Big Bang? And by the way, on that I should say, you know, there are some conjectures. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all, in principle, if we figure it out, if we have a theory of quantum gravity, it's possible to imagine that we will figure out how to create a universe in the laboratory. <laughs> by irritating the vacuum, you might create a baby universe. <laughs> and if we do that, it will offer a solution to what happened before the Big Bang. Perhaps the Big Bang emerged from the laboratory of another civilization. So it's like <laughs> a baby universes are being born yeah. out of laboratories. And inside the baby universe, you have a civilization that brings to existence a new baby universe. So yeah. Just like humans, right? We yes. have babies and they make babies. Yeah. So in principle, that would solve the problem of why there was a Big Bang and also what happened before the Big Bang. Yes. So we came, our umbilical cord is connected to a laboratory of a civilization that produced our universe once it figured out quantum gravity, you know? It's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's baby Big Bangs all the way down. It's, it's, yes. just big, it's just Big Bangs all the way down. So if we collect data about how the universe started, we could potentially test theories of, or it can educate us 
about how to unify quantum mechanics and gravity. If we, if we get any information about what happens near the singularity of a black hole, you know, if we, yes. if we get a, a sense of, you know, somehow we, we learn what happens at the sing, that would educate. So there are places where we can search for evidence, but uh, it's very challenging, I should say. And my point is, you know, the string theorists, they decided that they know how to approach the problem, but mm -hmm. they don't have a single theory. Uh, th there is a multitude of theories and it's not tightly constrained and they cannot make predictions about black holes or about the beginning of the universe. So, so at the moment I say we are at a loss. And I, the, the way I feel about this concept of the theory of everything, we should wait until we get enough evidence uh, to guide us. And until then, you know, there are many important problems that we can address, you know? Why, why bang our head against the wall on a problem for which we have no guidance? Right, we don't have a dan good dance partner in terms of evidence. There's not, exactly. I mean, it'd be interesting, just like you said, I mean, the lab is one place to create uh, universes or black holes, but it'd be fascinating if there is indeed a black hole in our solar system that you can interact with. So the problem with the origin of the universe is all you can do is collect data about it, right? right. You can't interact with it. Well, you can, for example, detect gravitational waves that uh, emerged from that, and you know there is an effort to do that, and that could potentially tell us something. But um, yeah, uh, it's a challenge, and that's why we're stuck. So I should say, despite what physicists portray, that uh, you know we live through an ex exceptional growth in our understanding of the universe, we're actually pretty much stuck, I would say, because we don't know the nature of the dark matter, most of the matter in the universe. We don't know what it is, uh, and we don't know how the universe started. We don't know what happens in, this, in the interior of a black hole. 